Hi there, Lindsay here. Today we're going to do a fun project. We're going to paint a peacock feather on black paper using metallic watercolors. And um, I'm using black watercolor paper by Stonehenge, but you could use a heavyweight black cardstock if that's what you have. I don't think it would really um, be much different for this technique. I'm using metallic watercolors. The ones I'm using are from Artsy, and I'll have a review on these paints coming up later this week. They're very similar to the Paul Rubens watercolors. If you've been looking for some metallic colors, there is the swatch. I did find the Paul Rubens Stiller a little bit more glittery than these. These are almost more like a gouache, um, but any metallic watercolors you have on hand will be fine. I'll link to everything in the video description. For the bookmarks, I took a piece of 9 by 12 paper, cut it in half, so it was 6 by 9, and then I cut these 3 inches wide. So these are 3 by 6, so that's half out of half a sheet of watercolor paper, and then I've got this larger sheet back here that is 6 by 9 that we're going to paint a little bit bigger on, because that will be easier for you to see. But I thought this was much more practical, and how fun would it be to give somebody a book for Christmas and have one of these hand-painted bookmarks in it? I just think this would be really pretty. Once this stuff is dry, it's not going to rub off, so it should be perfectly safe. Uh, for using it in your books, unless you read in the tub, then I guess you could end up reconstituting the paint. And in that event, you could always spray this, um, or if you're worried about that happening, you could spray this with a uh, fixative, a final fixative, before you give these away. That'll also darken the paper and make the metallics even a little bit more shiny. So that's a great solution. The tassels I'm using are very inexpensive. Of course, you could use a piece of ribbon or yarn. You don't have to go and buy tassels for this, but I thought this was pretty because satin tassels have that very similar sheen as a peacock feather and as our metallic watercolor. And I got a bag of 100 on Amazon for like eight bucks. Um, quite some time ago. I'm sure they still have them. The price may vary because it usually does on Amazon, but uh, there was 20 different colors and I like to make bookmarks. I don't know what it is. I just love tiny pieces of art. So um, so I thought that that would be fun to have. Um, so we're going to set this aside and we are going to grab our watercolor paper. I'm going to flip mine over because, or black cardstock because I got a smudge on the other side. And I'm just going to get a few supplies out. Now I did grab a couple of um, watercolor pencils because with these artsy paints, I noticed like the green, it shows up green on white paper, is just gold on the black paper, so I'm gonna wanna add a little bit of green with a watercolor pencil. You could also use gouache or regular watercolors. Um, those were just real handy, so I figured I'd use that. Um, and and that, that's just something you wanna be, be aware of when you're using metallic paints, is you wanna swatch them on, and I recommend swatching them in the order that they are in your palette so you don't get confused when you're working. You want to swatch them on black and on white so you know what color to expect depending on what you're painting on. So say you're painting this bookmark on black, but you're going to then paint um, maybe a gift tag on white, or you're going to do a little decorating on some white wrapping paper. So you'll, you'll need to know how your colors are going to look, um, because it can be very confusing and deceiving when you look at these pans and you see one color and it looks completely different on your paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch the uh, center of the peacock feather here. I'm going to start off, and I'm doing this bigger, obviously, than I did on the tag because I want it to be easier for you to see. Hopefully that shows up. I'm going to do this kind of like, um, kind of like oval with a notch cut out of it. That's just like the eye of the feather. And then I'm going to draw this kind of larger square, rounded square around that. And don't fuss about this. I think the more perfect you try to make it, the worse it looks. You want it to look natural and random like nature. Okay, so try not to fuss about it. This is something that would be fun to work in, you know, make a batch of these. Um, you can work on this while you're um, while you're watching TV in the evening. Another product you could use for this would be like metallic brush pens, if you have metallic brush pens. I really think that's all I want to put down there because the rest we can easily do with the paint and we'll be using the black of our paper for like the spaces between our um, our feathery fronds just to, you know, that's what's really going to make them stand out really well. All right, we're going to start off with a small brush and I would go with uh, like a synthetic brush, like a golden taclon, um, not one that's super soft and absorbent that's meant to act like fur. You want something that's a little bit stiffer because you don't want, and you want to go smaller than you usually do because you don't want a ton of water. What I recommend you doing is having a spray bottle handy, spritz your watercolors about five minutes before you go because you want your paint to be kind of like, um, Oh, uh, jelly kind of. You want it to kind of feel like a gel. So can you see when I when I'm in my paint here, I'm really picking up quite a bit of color. Actually, let me hold this up over the 
Can you see? You can see that I have color on that brush. It's really, really thick. And if I want to add more color to my pans, I'm just going to give them a spritz with my spray bottle rather than getting water from my bucket because that's going to give me just the right amount. I, I want this real thick. So it's very different than how we usually use watercolors. If you need to moisten your brush, you can like put a drop of water on your palette so you don't get too much. And you don't want to get water up here because the drips will drip down and then you'll get a big glob where you don't want it. So as you apply your paint, it's a good idea to think of the direction that everything is going to be, that all these fronds are going to be coming out from. So think of like the eye of the peacock feather being kind of like the center point of where all these, these fronds are coming out from. Because I think the end of the barb of the feather is right there at the eye, I believe. I'm going to pick up a little bit of water in that little droplet. So just kind of spray some water on your palette so you have these little droplets you can dip into so you don't get too much. And experiment with your paint. So if these paints are new to you, or if you're not very familiar with using metallic paints, try some different colors. It's like you'll you'll figure out once which ones you like the best. You, some of the colors look so similar when you swatch them, but it's not until you use them that you realize, oh, that one's a little bit more green, and that one's a little bit more turquoise, that one's a little bit more navy, and it just gives you a little bit more um, knowledge about your product. And even if it ends up kind of filling an area in solidly, the fact that you've put in those little those little um, directional strokes will help. Okay, you're not going to see all the detail, but, you, but it will definitely help you. Now, the next part is where I need a little bit of help because I don't have a good green for on top of black. So I'm going to start off with my brightest green, which is this one that looks like, kind of like an apple green here. But it's going to be mostly gold. So what I'm actually going to do is take my green water-soluble pencil, and it can be whatever brand you have. I'm going to go in and I'm going to pre-color the area using, I'm kind of like extending the lines that I have coming out from the center of my, um, of the eye of the flower there. And that's going to help give me enough pigment so that it can mix in with the golds and hopefully show up a little bit more for me. Now, if you find that your color is just, you're not getting a vivid enough color, after it dries, you can go in with your regular colored pencils or your watercolor colored pencils. I find that the wax, you know, the nor normal, the regular traditional watercolor um, colored pencils, the wax colored pencils do show up a little bit more, but whatever you have, totally, you know, always experiment with what you have. That's how you learn what your products are going to do, and that's how you develop new techniques. You may you may be like, oh, I don't have that product, but I have this. You might be the first person that's ever tried mixing those two products together, and there you've just developed a new technique. So don't be afraid to experiment. So I'm going right over those little white lines that I drew. Next, I want some brown, and this is a really pretty rich brown here. I rinsed off my other color. You can see I'm getting some really good creamy paint there. This is acting a lot more like tempera, so if you've ever painted with tempera before, I know you're getting a lot of glare there because of the shininess of the paint. Um, your colors are much more packed in closer together here in the eye as we do the, um, as we do, I must have had some water on my thing. You see I got a big blob there. That's because water, when I rinsed off my brush, I didn't wipe my handle and a drip of water dripped down. So that's why I want you to avoid. Um, Oh, I totally lost my train of thought. What was I saying? <laughs> um, oh, yeah. You're going to notice that your colors are more packed together in the center around the eye of the feather. And they're going to get more sparse as you get those longer floaty fronds that kind of come out away from the barb further. Uh, so that's fine. But get in the habit of doing your strokes with the direction of the... Um, of the previous, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have blotted it off there. I should get fresh, I should get water from a droplet on my palette so I don't get too much because that's gonna help you get a better, a more realistic look. And it's just gonna train your hand on painting this. All right, I need to get a little bit of a goldy green in the center. I'm gonna use this one up here. It's almost like a, it almost looks like a tarnished gold or tarnished brass color. I'm going to check for any beads before I get too far. 
Oh, and I think I had one. It slipped down to the pan, so that's lucky. Not on my paper. And I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap. And I'm just going to overlap the brown because it kind of transitions into the brown. So I'm just going to kind of scribble them in together, get them to transition a little bit. And because I know that it should have like a green kind of undertone, I'm going to go into my watercolor pencil while it's still wet and just kind of color with that direction of those barbs. Those, uh, I don't know what you call them, flags maybe? Those little individual bits of feather. Now don't worry if you feel like you should have left more black because um, that's not that big of a deal. You can go in with a pen later and add more, or you can, if you didn't have enough, you can fill in more. That's not a real big deal. So with this next row, we're going to do a little bit of gold, and I'm just going to get this nice bright uh, yellowy gold here. And what I'm going to do here, because um, you just have a really faint um, coloring, I am going to very gently just kind of dot and I'm going over that original white line that we drew, just super, super light dotting. And it will give us the appearance of having this little gold rim. Um, I'm taking my time here so that, you know, and I'm doing it larger than you will in your bookmark. So you can probably paint a lot faster after you've done one of these with me. You'll be able to fly right through them. Um, but I'm going slow because I want you to, you know, be able to see all the steps. I'd rather make it like super obvious and make sure nobody is left behind because you can always put me on double speed if you want to then have anybody worried like what did she just do I don't understand okay so we've got that part now the next part we're going to do is some bright purple oh, I got beads on my brush gotta wipe those off beads of water not what I want okay and these are going to be going on the outside of the gold. If you got any brown that went too far, that went beyond the gold, don't worry, just paint over it. The, um, these, these metallic watercolors are very reflective and opaque. You're not gonna be able to see through them. That's why they show up so well on black. That's why they really glimmer on black. I dipped in my water again, so I'm gonna check and make sure I didn't get any it's a hard habit to break. If you used to like normal watercolor painting and you're using tons and tons of water, it's so tempting just to dip right in that bucket. And I've done it several times after warning you not to. Okay, so now at the bottom of this part of the feather, you've got the, the thicker barb. Now you can go in later and add detail with a black pen if you want to. I'm just going to try to do like kind of lost, lost and found edge there so I see where that is but I do want to leave quite a bit of space unpainted. So what I want to do at this point is just get a few hints of what I want and then I'm going to just try to continue that so it can kind of meet up with that purple that I put there. Now I'm going to tip it to the light and make sure you can see that, okay? Picking up water from my palette like a good metallic watercolorist should. It's so funny, just, you know, it's watercolor, but you add metallic, like, mica pigments in it instead of, you know, transparent pig pigments, so you get a whole different working effect. Now I'm just going to drag some of these out, and in the second we're going to switch to a liner brush, which is a, it's a small brush like this, it's a number two brush, well the one I have anyway, but it's got longer bristles, so it holds more paint. Um, you have a little less control with those brushes, but because we're going to be um, doing much longer strokes, it doesn't matter. We're not working in any real tight spots, so, so that's fine. But before we do that, we are going to go to gold again, because we've got a little, little blush of gold we want to get in there. Um, I'm actually going to try this one. I didn't use this one before, but that's kind of pretty. It's kind of like a, it's got a little bit more platinum-y. I'm going to mix those two together. I think that would look real pretty. We're going to take that mix of colors. So we've got that brighter gold and we've got that light gold. Mix them together. 
And what I want to do is just start about, um, let's say a third of the way up from the bottom of the eye and I'm just going to start just throwing in little wisps. Now these are all, like this is all one strand. If you think of like a strand of hair, it's all one strand. It's just got like an ombre, uh, ombre coloring pattern to it, kind of like they did some fancy hair dye or something. So you want this, you want to have a contin uh, continuity there. That's why you want those brush strokes to match. Do the same thing over on this side. Always turn your paper so that it's more comfortable for you to work. Try to somewhat mirror what you have. It doesn't have to be perfect, but proportion-wise, you know, it doesn't have to exactly match, but you do want about the same proportion. Okay, and now we're going to switch over to the liner. And I'm going to start with the purple that we've already used. And if you feel like the color's too opaque, you can go in with, you can add a little more water onto your brush and that will thin it out and have it not be quite so stark. So I'm continuing any lines that I've already made. And I'm not doing it everywhere though, because I'm going to be bringing in kind of a burgundy color. Just doing kind of like a hatching here, right off the edge of the page. This is why it's so fun in the bookmarks because um, you just continue it right off the edge. And these are watercolors. If you're working around right your table, you'd wipe off any over like brush strokes as long as you're not on like a tablecloth, <laughs> which I can't imagine you'd be watercoloring on a tablecloth. Okay, so let me just kind of tip it to light so you can see what we've put in there. Now we're gonna go to that burgundy color. I've got a couple that I really like, um, and I'm gonna show you. So look how different this color looks, purpley, silvery purple on the black, but it looks kind of like the color I want on the white, but I know it's not gonna look like that. So, but if I look at this color, it looks like hot pink kind of on white. That is what the perfect color. I can use this on its own, or I can mix it with that, depending on the sheen that I want and the color that I want. Because I, I feel like that color is a little shinier, but that color is more of the tone that I want. So I'm going to mix them together, mostly this color, because I know that's going to show up more as my um, rosy purple, and then a little bit of this to it to uh, just add to it a bit. I'm going to add a little bit more water so it can flow a little bit. And I'll also, because I want this to be brightest in the center, this will also just kind of make it so it's not super bright. And for this color, I actually like to drag it off the edge especially on my bookmarks because that gives you a nice, um, it, it gives you a nice finished look, I think. So you don't have like an awkward edge. Another option would be to trim down the bookmarks if you don't like your edge, but I think if you just kind of flick it off from the edge like this, you get a really nice effect. Now I did my bookmarks with the same size brushes that I'm using here for this larger one. So, you know, if you want to go down a brush size, feel free, but um, a number two round, a number two liner is going to work really well for you. Um, and it's going to help you develop your brush control because you'll learn how to hold that brush straight up and down for those finer lines and um, You'll get muscle memory by doing all that hatching when you're doing a bunch of lines next to each other. It's a drawing term um, Sometimes you hear of cross hatching. That's when you add another row of lines. You're not doing that here But um, this is definitely going to help your drawing skills because you're going to get some of that hatching practice. And you're just going to kind of work your way around and fill in as you like. Now I love mixed media, so if you find there's colors that didn't show up as bright as you wanted or you didn't have right, the, just the right color in your set of paints, then you can, um, you can alternate it. Now you might be thinking, well this is great Lindsay, I really like to try that, but I don't have metallic watercolors. You can use... Um, you could use gouache and not have it be metallic. You could use gouache and then go over it with like a pearlescent um, glittery color. That would be really pretty. There's a pen uh, called Stardust, which is a really shimmery, clear glitter, glue, um, clear glitter gel pen. And that would work really well for like drawing over after you've used gouache. Because gouache is opaque, you'd want to do it on top of it. And that would give you a really nice effect. 
Um, so, you know, use whatever you have. Maybe you just have gel pens. Maybe you have a set of like 100 gel pens and you're like, oh, I think that'd be so pretty with my gel pens. I'm going to try it that way. Absolutely. I will link up the reference photo that I'm working from below. It's from Unsplash, a site where I get a lot of my uh, photos because they're royalty free and commercial use. I thought this would be such a pretty um, subject to do on the black paper. And I think they make lovely bookmarks. So I hope you like this idea. They make cute gifts, cute gifts for a teacher, a librarian on their own. Now, if you get a situation like that where it's like, whoops, I got a really big, um, thick line and I don't like that, just take a white, a wet paper towel, I'm sorry, a dry paper towel and just lift it off. And then once it's dry, you can go in with a black pen and you can like draw, draw some lines in there to separate them a little bit. So sometimes it can be hard to see the color when it's, when it's kind of shining like that. And uh, so I'm gonna tip it so you can see. Now some of this is still wet. So what I recommend is that you wait for it to dry, but I'm gonna show you how I got kind of a, how I was able to touch up some of these so I got a little bit more of the effect that I wanted here. Now on this one, I scraped a lot in my wet paint with the end of a paintbrush, and I used the end of one of my Aquarelle br brushes. They're the ones that had the little scraper on the end. You could also use a cut up credit card. Of course, now that I'm saying that I can't put my hands on any of those brushes like that. They've got the scraper end and I just went in and scraped and that gave me some really fun texture. And on, um, let's see, was this one? On this one I used a little bit of a black India ink pen just to bring some of my lines back. So feel free to adjust for however you need to to get the look that you want. Um, if you're not sure, if you need anything else, you can always wait and look at it later because often we think something's a mess and then when we come back and look at it later it actually looks fine. But I think I need it a little bit darker here. So I'm going to go in just a little bit of black and define the top of that, darken that up a little bit and just kind of give it a little bit of a definition on the bottom there. And super, super lightly I'm just going to kind of tap around this shape. And by tapping it gives it the impression that you still have those individual um, feather fronds and I am going to also just lightly trace the edge of the barb here starting over right there and that just gives us a little bit of definition I like to do just a little uh, dotted line kind of where the colors transition and I find that gives me a really nice clean look. Now this is a very kind of like geometric abstract type of thing so have fun with it. It doesn't have to be um, doesn't have to be perfect. If you want to add a little colored pencil, um, adding a little indigo, make sure you go in the, sh the, the direction of your of the way your feather feathers are growing out there. You can do that. It gives it a nice look. You can grab some green and you can do some green and really brighten that green up. Once it's dry, it might, it's a, oh shoot, I broke the tip off of that. Um, you can go on top of that and get some more color that way. You do a little bit of brown. You can even use your, if you have metallic color pencils, you can use your, your metallic color pencils. Those would be really pretty. I think also the non-metallic colors, which I'm using, are nice too because it gives your eye a little bit of a break. Um, but absolutely experiment and have fun with this because I think that this is really cute and I just love how they look with the little satin tassels. I think they just make delightful bookmarks and this is something that, um, you know, you could paint up for your kids' teachers as a, you know, holiday gift or as a teacher appreciation gift or anything like that or um, just make them to use them for yourself because they're so much fun. Uh, so there you go, a project for metallic watercolors, a project for black paper. Um, this would be pretty in white paper too, so just use what you have and see what you can come up with. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Until next time, happy crafting.